five. Here with Cindy Sewell, Gene Jensen, aka Flute Master, and this is our second MTV Live Inside the Box cast. I've got Brett next to me. He handles a lot of the marketing, social media aspects here at the company. He's going to help us kind of just organize some of these questions. So if you're asking questions right now, Brett's going to kind of write some down, and then at the end, we're going to answer your questions. You can ask uh, Cindy Jean questions. Probably don't want to ask me questions. We've got Brett questions. And uh, we're going to be basically talking about spring fishing day. We like to keep these things, you know, seasonally oriented. Before we get into that, really quick, kind of wanted to, um, you know, interview, so to speak, Cindy and Jean, because these two anglers, MTB anglers, got a chance to fish together recently, and I kind of want to hear how it went on the water. I saw Cindy's video. Dean, your video is lagging a little bit. I didn't, I didn't get a chance to see that one. I don't know if it's out yet or if it's going to come out, but it should be out soon. But I got to see the video, but I kind of want to hear from you guys both. I'm sure some of you guys want to hear about it too, how you guys did on the water. What was it like fishing together? Go ahead. You guys want to take it? Go ahead, Gene. Okay, I'll go ahead. Um, it was pretty fun. It was actually Sydney's first bass fishing trip outside the state of Florida. And so um, it was um, – she got to catch her first our first northern strain largemouth, which was pretty cool. Uh, we caught lots of really good fish the two days she was up there. And I tell you, uh, that girl's a stick. I mean, just put a jig in her hand, let her drag it around a little bit, and she'll catch a fish. So uh, I was pretty impressed. Yeah, I saw I saw she had you get in the net a few times. It almost like you should have just dropped the rod and then picked up the net because yeah. – yeah, you're scooping up those. It was cool. That was a cool video. Um, how many? What was what was the weight final day? What was the estimated weight? As far as uh, best videos? First day was between 20 and 22 pounds for our best five, and then the second day we went kayak fishing and went back to this one of the same spots. And the big females had moved off, and and the and the males had moved on. So we sat there and just whacked a little bitty fish all day. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it looked it looked really awesome. Um, it was it was like one of those situations where it looked like you, you guys were just on them? Was it a lake that just tends to be pretty good, or was it timing? Was timing everything as far as it was? It was Clark's Hill Lake, which is one of the tougher lakes in the area, and uh, and it the it was a solid pre-spawn. They were within seven to ten days of moving up to spawn, and uh, and so we just hit those transition spots and those points on the way back towards spawning pockets. And yeah, uh, actually, it looked. It was Sydney who figured out what mood the fish were in. I kept wanting to fish fast, and she was dragging a shaky head. And got the first bite, and I'm like, forget it. We're going to be fishing slow the rest of the day, and that's what that's what ended up catching our fish. What uh, what depth are they coming out of generally? Like, what were some of the bigger ones where they pushed uh, off? Two to five feet. Yeah, that first one that I caught in the sticks was pretty shallow, where you took that uh, chatterbait off that. Stick. Yep, that was less than two feet. That first one. It was pretty good. Yeah, my videos work, we're working on. I'm because I'm in the middle of moving, selling my house, and, and buying a new one. I'm trying to spread my videos out as long as I can because there's going to be a, a period of time where I don't get to fish while I'm moving. So that was just something we're talking about. So you're you're literally running this channel, getting ready to move, and then trying to all at the same time put out new fresh content. You said you said you're out doing your slam recently. Yep. So, yep. Uh, yeah, there's there's a lot that goes behind. I mean, you guys know it better than. Than I do. There's a lot that goes behind running the channel. You know, there, we we've got families, we've got other obligations, stuff like that. But uh, it's it was really cool to see you guys both fish and uh, put a hurt on. Man, got me jealous because it's cold. It's, it's the biting here, but it's still a little cold. So I was I was a little jealous. But yeah, you guys you guys really put a decent hurt on. What was uh what was like the specific bait of choice? Like was there was there a color factor where they just eaten? I don't know what you catch most years on, Sydney. Was it the shaky head, or did we catch them on a little bit of everything? That first day, majority of what I caught was on a shaky head, um, just one of those doomsday Roku worms, and like a cinnamon mint, so it's like a light blue. And then that second day, um, it was just back and forth with the pumpkin jig, and then you drag in that craw pattern crankbait. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh... It was it was pretty neat. the 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 majority of the fish came dragging. It was called a creeper by by a greenfish tackle, and it's just a it looks like an archy archy head, but it's a shaky head, and you put um, a craw bait on it, like a, a speed worm or something small. The the vile craw is almost too big for it, so you put a little small craw bait on it, and you literally crawl it, drag it on the bottom, and the way it drags, the way it sits up, 
the fish just if they're in that real funky mood, they hit it. There's been a lot of tournaments won in the last few uh, last couple of years since that thing came out. That's interesting. So was that the that was, was that the bait that you caught that like I'm referring to Sydney's video right now, but last fish on where you had that vertical hook set where you I think it was like it looked like it was close to four or five. I don't know how big it was, but was that that fish? I don't know. You, you were like your boat your boat was pointed away from the bank. when I netted the bass. Yeah. You were uh. Wasn't that the crankbait? That was the crankbait. Yeah, the last few fish, the good big fish was caught on one of my favorite seasonal spots. It's no bigger than the deck of your boat, um, and just I crank it. I, I, there's a specific boat position you set up on to crank, crank this spot, and if you hit that one rock or, or one, one hard spot on that point, you're going to catch a fish every time. That lipless crankbait video I did three years ago, all three of those fish, I caught 29-pound limit off of that one spot one time. And so it's one of those spots you can go back to this time of year every single year and catch good fish off of. And it's just you crawl that crankbait along it, and it bumps bumps that hard spot, and you just I get I get the jitters because I know I'm about to get bit. <laughs> so it's like one of those situations where they're you know they're in a specific area. You find that happens in other lakes too. Is it just like they get related to like such a condensed area? It's like how. Do you use your what like what's a, what's a technique that you utilize in order to find something like that? Like let's say like a someone would go out on a, on a lake, they, they want to know where that, that rock area is, that area where those fish are condensed. What, um, what, I, what I do is I find a major, major spawning area. This is the, this major spawning area is way back in the back of a creek, and it's just a huge flat that they spawn on every year. Well, then I back way out, because I know they're not spawning yet. I back out, and I follow the creek channel, and I find a spot where that creek channel doesn't run, run into the tip of a point, but runs up against the side of a point, so it's a channel swing. And that point that's in that channel swing is where they like to stack up. And I, and one out of three or four of those points will have fish on it. And if you catch one, there's going to be a dozen or two dozen on that point. And that's just the place where they stop, the last stop before they move back to spawn. I, this this time of year is like, personally, I'm, I don't know what, how you guys feel about this. Personally, it's a favorite time to fish because even though the bite can be specific, like if you're on that specific bite, it can just be so good. You know, like in the summertime, get a mixture of everything, you can catch them on top, you can catch them in flipping docks like that, but this time of year it's like they're on a certain bite, but as long as you can figure that out, it's just you're bound for a, a good day. Yeah. Uh, like is that how, kind of how you guys get down from Georgia and Florida and stuff like that? And with Sydney, it's 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 a confidence bait, it's really what I notice. And when I travel from lake to lake, I always I seem to find myself catching fish on the same thing I use at home, or the same type of bait I'm using at home because it's a confidence bait. If I'm in, if I'm here, if I'm at Lay Lake in, in the or a leech lake in northern Minnesota, I'm still going to be using a flipping bait into the grass because I have confidence. In it. Yeah, that's that's pretty interesting. That actually kind of transitions me to the next question. Is so like in the springtime, what's one bait that you have tied on all the time? Let's say you're not even using it, but it's just like one of those spring baits that has always kind of been there when the bite's tough. Like, could you pick one, or is how how would you how would you go about choosing that one lure? You go first, Sydney. Alrighty, uh, for spring, uh, for me, it would have to be a lizard of some sort, Texas rigged, and uh, here, all the colors for me are black and blue. Like, I, flipping, pitching, anything, any style creature bait, lizards, whatever soft plastic, there's just something about the dark water here that bass cannot leave the black and blue alone. So, anytime for spring, it's a lizard, and it's always some type of black and blue or an emerald blue, whatever the case may be for that. Are you Texas rigging that, or what's what's like the rigging preference for you? Um, it just really depends. If I'm going to want to pitch it up into some pads or heavy cover, I'll Texas rig it with whatever sized weight I need to get through. But sometimes I'll do it weightless and just pitch it under some hanging limbs and just let it do its thing and just twitch it. I mean, I'll just figure out what the bass want, you know, and where they're sitting, of course. That's actually pretty interesting. We'll let the, let the fall weightless. It's just, it, it allows that fish some time to catch up to the bait. It's slow and methodical and just a noise. And I feel like the longer that bait sits there in front of their face, it just it builds up their anger and it just gets them more aggressive. Right, yeah. You, you bounce back and forth depending on what the fish want and, like, what specifically you're fishing. So that's, that's pretty cool. What's, what's your go-to spring? Springtime rig or bait? 
I'm torn. It's between a chatterbait and a lipless crankbait. I always have a, a red lipless crankbait tied on in pre-spawn all the way up until uh, the temperature gets into the high 50s, and then I'm I'm moving on, I'm moving on because they're getting getting up and getting ready to spawn. But yeah, it's gonna be a lipless crankbait probably. Are there specific conditions that you bring out those two baits because they're both you know power fishing moving baits? Is it is it one of those baits? It's a question I personally have too. Is this, mm -hmm. you try to try to focus on? Um, during a specific type of bite or type of day, like are you looking for wind or are you going to fish this stuff in, in, in calm water or is it just a seasonal kind of deal? Um, in pre-spawn, I will start fishing it when the water temperature gets about 48 degrees. Okay. Um, and I, I have crawled a lipless crankbait to where you could feel the, 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 the tip of it hit, hitting the bottom and just praying I don't get it hung on something. And but they just annihilate it, and and so that's what I'm fishing. And same thing with the with the chatterbait. The thing I like about a chatterbait is you you can crawl it like a jig if you have to, and you can yo-yo it and pop it up and down. You can fish it a lot. And there's a lot of different ways you can fish it depending on the activity of the fish. And I'm gonna fish it from that um, from the spawning area. I always when I'm fishing pre-spawn, I I go spawning area backwards. I'm going to fish from the spawning area back about five turns in the creek channel. And wherever there's some steep banks, I'm going to fish along the steep banks. And so it's just all about pre-spawn. Then once I get bit, I may slow down and throw like a Texas rig lizard or a jig or something because I want to clean up that spot that I caught that fish because it's not by itself. Okay, so you can basically find the fish with the movement. Yeah. That's cool. That's something that I think is is... That can be applied anywhere. That's not just like a Georgia deal because something that a lot of northern anglers, anglers do up here when the water temperature is cold, I see it in the west coast and east coast. So for anyone out there really who's, who's trying to get on them right now, um, that's definitely some, some seriously good knowledge. Uh, so that leads me to another question. When you're when you're running down the lake, when you're looking, when you're using these baits like that, what are, I'll, I'll narrow it down to like three, what are like three many things that just look so good? Like that, that looks like spring bass to me. Uh, so like what is some, so it could be structural, uh, structural, just anything like like you said, a, a swing or something like that. What's some stuff you're looking for? Like three main things. Uh, go ahead, Sydney. You know, uh, for me, uh, here in Florida, you're always going to have some type of plant in the water, pads, hydrilla, whatever. So if I can find any type of grass, I'm going to go straight to that first off and just look for those tiny pockets to flip in. <laughs> After that, if I can find some docks, throw up in there, and then um, even just little random piles of uh, lumber or whatever, pitch in there. Like isolated or something like that? Exactly, yeah. That's cool. That's, that's kind of what I like to fish. I mean, personally, I guess the three things I like to look for is being in the north, it's just anything with chunk rock, big rock banks. Um, just tends to heat up a little bit faster. I find that, especially the steeper it is, too, they'll, they'll get stacked up on that, too. And docks, too, like you said. Docks are just awesome because they absorb a lot of heat. Uh, you know, heat this time is, is, is kind of rare this time of year. It's actually, I think, is it still snowing? It snowed for 45 minutes or an hour. So it's, it's snowing right now. So really anything, snowing that, sideways. anything that holds heat up here north, and it applies for you guys down there, of course, as well, if you're getting a cold front, it's going to be money because um, these fish are looking for an excuse to move up shallow, spawn, and do a little feeding. So those are my two. I, I can't really think of a third one. What about you, Gene? Uh, the first place I always look, I'm fishing Highland Reservoirs. So Sydney's got the grass lakes down in Florida, the natural lakes. And the Highland Reservoirs, I look for pockets that have creeks running into the back of it. And so typically that's going to be the, the, a place on the lake that they pull into first. And then um, I like to go into major creeks mainly, but even the little feeder creeks off to the side. And like you, I'm looking for steep banks because those bass follow those steep banks, and those steep banks are hard bottom, and they also will hold a lot of crawfish. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus on those steep banks all the way back. And every single channel swing, as that channel swings up against the bank, I'm going to fish from the beginning of the swing all the way out past the, the end of the swing until I get bit. And then from there, I can just go from creek to creek and fish that same exact area all the way up. So that's the first place place I look is something that has water running in the back of it. That's yeah, that's that's a good one too. And it's like one of those things you don't really need a graph to find either. You can look at a map and just see where those small creeks meet the big lake. So that's one of those awesome little patterns. And that's what's fun about this time of year is they can be sometimes they can be predictable. It's like you got got the right mindset. They can be kind of predictable and fun to catch them. Like you said, they get condensed like when you two were fishing out together. 
uh, you guys really figured them out in, in a good time frame. Um, yeah, those are those are some awesome things to look for. And it, you know, sometimes it changes depending on where you live, but for the most part, that stuff is cons- like what you guys listed off is consistent to you up north, and I'm sure it's a, the vice versa, same way or other way around. Um, do you want to threat? Do we have any good questions so far? Yeah, some people are asking some good ones. Um, spring related. Um, some people are asking what's a good time of day to fish in spring or if it matters. Okay. For, for me, uh, I don't want to say spring start like the other day. It was officially the first day of spring. But here, I mean, the water temps have been high 60s, low 70s since almost the end of February. So we were, we were, I was fishing in the mornings right before the sun would come up, and the water temps 67, 68 degrees already. So for me, it doesn't. It's you know, morning, mid noon, afternoon. The fish are all biting, but where you're, you're at it's still going to be freezing cold in the morning, you know what I mean? It's going to take a while for the water to heat up for the sun to be out. Yeah, so is there like, I guess like maybe in, in, like in a different form of question, like do you find that even in the springtime for people who are down south, is like now a decent time to fish in like late afternoon, maybe even night, so to speak? Like is it is like the bite still on or are they, what's, how does that work? Oh yeah, right now the I'd say the bite's on fire as soon as the sun comes up, as soon as the sun goes down all day right now, especially with it being the spawn, you yeah. can find them. It seems like this time of year, it's just, it's really, it's, it's about the season. It's about what the fish are doing and their, like, internal uh, instinctive clock. You know, they're thinking about spawning, so you can usually take advantage of that and figure them out. What about you, Gene? What's, what's some good times to fish for you? In uh, I, I always take into account the water temperature. Um, if, if, the, if the nighttime was... Five degrees or ten degrees colder than the water temperature. Of course, the water temperature dropped during the night, and so I may not be in a hurry to get out until the sun comes up. Um, and then the very first places I'm going to hit, especially if it's in the 50s, the water temperature's in the low 50s. First place I'm going to hit is going to be rock. I'm going to go find rock, and then and then the floating boat docks that have the black floats underneath it that get the sun, and I'm going to hit those sunny banks and and try to catch them on something, you know, something moving. Uh, spinner bait, chatter bait, whatever, until I figure that out. And then once the sun gets up and the bass start to scatter and start to head on up the creeks, I may try to follow them. So it's just that 50-degree mark. Right now we're in the 60s. The bass pulled up to spawn yesterday. Um, so it's a whole different ball game now. So Yeah, that's that's interesting. Just just following with the not stick with one thing all throughout the day. Yep. Watch the water temperature. That's that's key. Yes. You want to you wanna open up some boxes? You want to start doing this? Talk about some lures that we got. We yeah. We all got our boxes this month. Of course, so we got it. We could. I could just walk over the desk. Yeah. Which one? Oh, this one. Yeah. Grab the big box. Um, we're just gonna take a moment to talk about some of the baits in here. I don't know. I've got a chance to fish with my pro box. Uh, have you guys gotten out yet and done any damage yet? Yeah, I finished my slam today. Yeah, you did your slam. And Sydney, did you, did you get a chance to fish any of these? Uh, not yet. I've I've fished. Uh, lures similar to it, but uh, I'll do. I get to do my slam Saturday, so that's when I'll get mine done. Yeah, definitely. That's that's gonna be awesome. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Wow, well, yeah, we got a bunch of we got a bunch of baits here. Um, we're just gonna take a moment to talk about a few. I got we've got the pro box right here. Um, and just kind of talk about some of the baits because I think one of the biggest things personally when I get a box to is how to fish some of these baits. Um, when and where are good times to use these baits? Cool thing is, I usually get some baits I've never even seen before. Uh, specifically, one one of them got was like a Rain's bum rig. Uh, this is a bait I don't fish a whole lot. I used to fish it a ton, but I haven't fished it a ton or fished a ton lately. So that's been kind of cool. But um, let's pick a few uh, in here and just kind of talk about how we use it. One that I think we should start off with, and maybe have Gene pick the other one is uh, start off with maybe the jig, little football head jig. This was in Pro Box, I think it was, and uh, it's a three eight ounce all train tackle football head jig. It's Looks like it's just in a regular watermelon color. Got a little crawl in here. I'll let you guys answer this first. How would you personally fish a bait like this? This guy right here. What kind of crawl trailer do you have on that? Well, it's it's a Cabin Creek Express crawl. It's like a little three and three quarters in size. Oh, that's yeah, I like that. It's good for cold water. Um, you know, I in my slam. Now the lake I fished today in the slam is a real silty lake, and so the jig really didn't work very well. 
I fished it for a little while, then realized all I was doing was dragging it under the silt, and it really doesn't work very good. No. But, uh, but you know, for a football jig, they say fish it in rock and everything else. Well, my favorite place to fish a football jig is on just hard bottom, sandy or clay or scattered rock. I don't like to fish it in a lot of rock because it does get hung up, but I find that scattered rock it works real good because you can drag it till you hit a rock and then shake it and then pop it over that rock, and a lot of times when you pop it over that rock, that's where the when the bass will hit it, and you just keep doing that over and over again. So that's kind of how I would do it. Just wasn't able to do it with my slam today. So there's you're looking for that kind of moving bite again. Kind of, you know, it's not a moving bait, it's not a power bait, but once you, you know, you get that one good jump off that rock, they're on it. You know, they're waiting for that bait to do something different almost. Yeah, especially this time of year because they're not going to, they're just going to sit there and stare at it. Until yeah. you scare the crap out of them or surprise them, and they jump up and grab it. So. Yeah, it's, it's interesting to see that you kind of have to mix it up, and that's probably why it's not the best idea just to go like this all day or just kind of hop it in the continuous motion. So it's a cool little bait. I got to fish it too. Uh, I was doing it in a similar manner you described. I was out fishing from a kayak, and uh, I was just dragging it across. I think you just did a video about this, kind of talking about transition areas. I was looking at an area where it went from sand to pea gravel to a little bit bigger rock, and I was just covering all my bases there, and then once I got to some of the bigger rock, they'd be on it. Um, and it's a cool bite when, when you when you catch them on a bait like this because it's pretty specific. You know, you're not going to generally use this around grass or too much brush, even though you can. But uh, if you have a little bit of rock, even like you said, it's just one or two rocks in an area, it can be a pretty effective little bait. But uh, paired up a little craw, and you're set. It's a good springtime lure too. People, you know, get stuck on the fact that you got to go super super shallow. Uh, sometimes you're pitching the jig, but this is a jig I personally like to throw in like a little bit deeper water, you know, like seven, ten feet. Um, There's people asking uh, while we're on the jigs, what's yeah. your favorite? What's your favorite trailer to put on a jig? Ooh, that's a tough question. I can give. I can give. I can give. Let me see. see. Uh, ben, ben. Ben. What's one? On your. This one? You want to see the trailer on this? Let me see the trailer. Yeah. Here. Okay, you just got a lot of chopping action. Yeah. So what the two different types of trailers you ought to put on a jig is you got to consider one that's a chopping, got a chopping trailer like the bio crawl, like the one you have on there has little uh, flanges that does it too. And then the other one is one that's a wavy action, like a chunk trailer, a uh, super chunk, super chunk junior. And uh, in the winter time when it's real cold, I want a wavy trailer. And in the summer or in 55 degrees and warmer, I want a chopping trailer when they're a little bit more active because crawfish are more active, same sort of deal. So no matter what you choose, look at them that way. Two different types, a wavy or a choppy, and you'll be good. Cool. That's a good answer. Yeah, and it depends on, like you said, the water temp. Um, what about you, Sydney? What, what, are your, what are your two trailer preferences? I actually just started using jigs not too long ago, so I can't say I have a particular favorite uh, for two, but what I've used the most and had, have had the most success with is a Gambler BB Cricket. Okay. They're a smaller size creature bait. They're probably that big, maybe. Just a little downsize on it, and that's what I use most of the time. And that's almost like, I think we can almost even do like a third category, do like jeans too, is, is like you got chopping, you got kind of waving, you got one that literally doesn't do much. I believe the cricket that doesn't have like moving claws, does it? It's just got the. the it looks. It looks similar to a. Uh, the zoom. What was that crawl you were using the other day, Gene? Speed crawl. Speed yeah, crawl. zoom speed, speed crawl. crawl. That exact same size. That's like thumping almost. That's like it's like. It's, I guess that's almost like chopping too. It's a little different. But yeah, that's like it's that's that's actually kind of like a, a different action too. I guess it really all depends on where you're at, what you're fishing. Um, Personally, sometimes when it gets cold here, especially up north when I'm up in Wisconsin, I like a trailer that's got like literally no action. Just something to add a little bit of bulk, maybe a little bit of scent, mm -hmm. and just to kind of have something stick up. Not necessarily move, but just stick up in front of the fish's face. Uh, one action that <laughs> works actually pretty good here is this um, so Biwa Armored Crawl. And this is one I believe went, I'm not sure which one is a pro or regular bass box. That was a regular. Yeah, you, did you get this one? Yeah. Yeah, this is this is this is one that's got like neither really, but it's just got these claws that stick up, kind of in that fighting stance, that defensive stance, um, and it, it's just a, it's like another, like I said, like a third category. So this is something to look into, even throwing on a, a football head finesse jig. 
there's there's a lot of different combinations, but like anything else, you kind of have to let the fish tell you what to do. But two different trailers that make a big difference depending on which ones you're throwing. That's a good question, though. Who asked that? Did you get the name? No, I didn't get the name. Oh, well, one guy asked it, and then a few people said, yeah, tell us. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, let's talk about some other baits. Gene, did you get one in your box that, that stood out? Something that was like, oh, that looks like a good Gene Jensen bait. Oh, yeah. the um, uh, This one's kind of funny. So it's a Japanese bait, I'm assuming. Yeah. If you look at the name, it says Bubbering Shaker. Uh -huh. I love how they, <laughs> instead of in bubbling, it's bubbering. Bubbering. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, this is an excellent, I caught a, uh, most of my fish on it today, an excellent drop shot of worm. And my problem when I was situated, the situation I was in is that we have so much pollen that's fallen, that's in the air right now from the pine trees, that um, it gets on the water and the wind stirs it up and it makes, basically, it makes, it turns clear water into, into um, almost muddy water. And, uh, and so it's real difficult to sight fish, but the bass were moving up and making beds. And so I dipped it in a little uh, clear and chartreuse JJ's Magic to make it look like a bluegill, and I would pitch it into whatever cover I could see, a stick up or a, a stump or a log or something, and just drop it in with a short leader um, drop shot and a number one, or no, yeah, it was a one-aught offset worm hook, so it was weedless. And just drop it in and make multiple pitches into different places and caught some really good fish and it really was I mean the action in on this thing is amazing and then it gets down in the water and those little rings collect all the air and you shake it and the bubbles come off of the off of the worm and it you know I've seen bass on bed annihilate things that were bubbling so it's just kind of a cool little deal I didn't even know existed yeah, it's, it's one of those baits that uh, you can fish a ton of different ways it's funny how you mentioned it personally it's a bait that I would take as far away from the shore as possible in like, you know, 20, 30 feet of water in the summertime and just kind of find like a little bit of structure or something to relate to and just drop shot vertically. Uh, but it's a, it's a bait that, you, that you've that proven, other names have proven that it can work in different situations. But uh, it's, it's a cool deal and this one is one that I got in my pro box. Uh, I was fishing it, it was last Sunday, man, like forever ago, last Sunday and I was just drop shotting it like traditional style, just nose hooking it and dragging it over anything I could find. And uh, it's, it's, it's you know, not my favorite way to fish in the spring. When the bite is super tough and you get a little cold front rolling through, it's something you can rely on. It's a good size, too. It's not too big. It's not too small. It's, I like it. I, I think we probably have to pick some more of these up because, uh, like you and me, we, I went up, I went through my pack instantly, so this is one I might have to take home with me. But uh, what about you, Cindy? Is there a bait that you got that stood out that you, you're thinking you're going to put a hurting on with? Uh, for me, it had to be uh, the Stinkos out of the pro box. Just because there's so many different ways to rig it. Texas wit, rig, wacky, there's everything. But uh, I did a tournament a couple, probably about two months ago, and I actually switched to a Cinco, and my bites went up tremendously. So it's just one of those, like Gene said earlier, confident, confidence bait. It's like, the stick bait's like over reliable. It's like one of those things that if you got them in your boat and like you're just you're close as to what's going on, or you trying to get on a bite, you can usually rely on them. And how are you fishing specifically? How are you rigging that day when you're getting on them? Uh, Texas rig. I put a uh, it was a half ounce weight tungsten on a uh, just an EWG four at four out Gamagatsu hook, and there was some uh, good cover, some uh, pencil sticks. Throwing it up in there. That's crazy because it's like it's, it's different because when I when I was doing my slam and I was doing my slam I was doing it minus the the big weight I was doing a, a weightless and I found a nice windy bank and I was just twitching along there but like you said it's versatile you can rig it literally so many different ways whack style uh, I mean on a shaky head if you wanted to like on a, just a regular jig head exposed hook um, you could flip it punch it with a Texas rig it's a versatile lure it's one of those lures that you know, if you've got the tools, you can you can usually put it to good use. Um, yeah, it was a cool little bait though. It's got like a weird, I don't know. It, it's like spongy. It's like it's like yeah, it's like really. I'd like to know what they make it of. It's really soft. It's got a ton of salt in it. But if you right there at the egg sac where you put your hook when you whack your rig it, if you pull it apart, it's got a mesh in it that makes it Ooh. makes the hook stay in there. So it la you don't have to wacky rig it with the O ring or anything. It's what? Got, it's got a plastic mesh right in the middle of it. 
See, that's something that I didn't even know. <laughs> because I didn't know that either. Well, your, hook, your hook doesn't rip out of it, and so you just whack your rig it and throw it. Yeah. That's awesome. I've but, always been impressed with, with the guy that, that, uh, run, that designs all these baits for Savage Gear. He's a freaking genius. It's, it's cool because it's minimal, too. You don't have to put, like, a ring on there or anything like that. It's, just and it's right there. there where the little egg sack is. That's pretty cool. I didn't even know that. <laughs> I honestly didn't even know. He's over there discovering the baits for us. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing, too, with these Cinco's, I've, I have a lot of people ask me if they're just starting to get into bass fishing and what's a go-to bait. I always recommend a Cinco just because you can fish it in so many ways, and you can't really screw it up. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, you can fish it however you want at whatever speed, and it's going to do what it's supposed to do, and it's going to attract the fish. Totally. It's like a pond. It's a great pond tactic. It's a great big lake tactic. It just depends on you know how you want to use it, really. It's it's a, it's a year-round water tournament. I was just catching them in 45-degree in water temperature with it and just moving it slow, and I know times where you can fish all the way up to really cold winter. So it's it's an awesome little bait. Specifically, this one's unique, though. I'm, I didn't know that I was weightless for it, so I, did, I guess I didn't really figure out that feature. If I was wacker, I probably would have figured it out. Um, but that's cool. Yeah, this this month's box was pretty neat. It, it, it catered to, I'd say, a majority of anglers, um, just being that it's got a variety of different lures in it. The other one I had, I got the most use out of the jig, probably. Um, this guy right here, the uh, armor tube worm, and then the bubber ring, four-inch bubber ring. And uh, yeah, it's... That's a good way to go, really. Just having have a nice selection of soft plastics and jigs and stuff like that. Uh, any any questions queued up, Brett? Anything? Yeah, we're getting some good ones. Um, a lot of people got one, so they're wondering if you guys had tips for how to work the whopper plopper. Oh, we need to. Oh yeah, I got that. Yeah, yeah. Here. A lot of people are excited about it, so. Cast it out. Reel it in. And reel it in. <laughs> Cast it out. And reel it back in. <laughs> That's one of those baits that, again, kind of like the Senko that a lot of anglers can use. If the water temp's a little warm, it's it's on. It's it's unique. It's a bait that I remember when it came out. It was I don't know if they had the smaller size, but I remember when Larry Dalbert came out, it was like a big one. They were it was like it was like you know for bigger, toothier critters. And when they came out with like I think maybe the smaller one, if they marketed a little more, uh, I just it blew up. Like it's, it was like sold out in Tackle Warehouse. Uh, being that we got one in the office, I took it immediately and put it in my bag. Even though I thought like I was going to get one in my box, I was like, "That's going straight." Yeah, in my bag. You got one in the office, so yeah. You, it, Brett, Brett missed out. See, the thing is, you got to be on top of things. What I do is I, I like to circle the uh, the office of Andrew who handles all that. So I circle anything that comes by. If it's a package that says like Lucky Craft on it, River to Sea, I'm usually on it with a pair of scissors and I already open it up and take some stuff home. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, the the, the, the thing about the Whopper Plopper, right about 65, or I'd, I'd even wait till 70 degrees all summer long until the end of fall, you can fish that thing on top water. And it, it can, my favorite is the biggest one. I mean, the, the biggest one they make, I have two of them, and they are torn up, and they catch nice fish. But, you know, I'm so jealous because my kids got all the regular box that had the Whopper Plopper, and I got the Pro Box, and I didn't get a Whopper Plopper, so... <laughs> you might have to... Send Gene a, a pity whopper plopper. <laughs> I think all we have left is just straight up black though. Is that kind That's of, all I fish. I fish. All I fish. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, it's a cool lure because it's like so unique, and I think the cool part about it is like it, it, it could it could be like one of those baits that's tough to fish with like the the like a prop on there, but it's like a really soft or softer plastic, so it doesn't like it doesn't get away with the hooks too much, and it's it's a cool lure. It's a bait I really have not fished before. Yeah. So I saw it at the office and heard more about it. It's a plopper. I mean, why would you want to fish it anyway? I know, it seems like an interesting, like, offbeat name. But then once you tie it on and start fishing, it's like it's serious. It's like a real deal, you know? It is a real deal. So, yeah, you guys, everybody that got it, have fun with it. It's I got one, and when I first looked at it, and I saw it when I was reading the uh, voucher box card, I'm like, whopper plopper. That's, <laughs> that's pretty interesting. And then I took it out. I'm, I'm showing the camera. I'm like, look, the tail moves and everything. Because I had never heard of it before. Yeah. And then, uh, my boyfriend was like, you got a whopper plopper? That's awesome. And he knew everything about it and had to teach me about it. And I watched some videos, and bass were annihilating it. They would come back after it like four or five times. It was ridiculous. Uh, and you, you can't include the the, uh, the Bama bassing videos because they have that special link that gets. <laughs> it, was a, uh, it was river to sea. Okay. <laughs> 
It was. Uh, it Can was... you hold yours up again, Sydney? People were saying in the comments oh. you could look at it. Yes. Spin the... Mine's the smaller one. Spin the tail. Show them how it works. It's like a buzz bait. It's yeah, like... it's a floating buzz bait. That's all it is. Yeah. Unique. It's one of those baits that you can't be like, oh, you could just use that one. It looks just like it. No, it's it's pretty unique. It's... And the hooks are sharp. So. <laughs> I know. I was playing with it. I found out. I just found that out. They're very sharp. <laughs> Sticking you in the fingers. Um, that was a good question. I totally forgot about that. I totally can't forgot. Forget, can't forget about the Whopper Plopper. Yeah, the Whopper Plopper. That was that was one of the big baits in the office. Oh, before we get off the Whopper Plopper, somebody's wondering if you think it could catch some pike and musky. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's. The, I remember seeing when I first saw videos about it. It was like Larry Dahlberg with a giant reel just like chucking a line at it and seeing it's like well, and bass. Bass can eat it too. But uh, cool. Um. Man, I'm trying to think what. So, so we we covered jigs, we covered spring fishing, we covered a little bit of whopper plopper action. We figured out that these worms have a little little band in them, or, or a little uh, a, a tough spot. You can, I mean, we've we've covered a lot thus far on the show. Is there anything that you guys want to touch base on as far as like something that you've maybe you've been out in the water, and you've been thinking like that's that's a pretty cool thing to talk about. I find that when I'm on the water. I start fishing, I try something new, and it works. I want to share it, you know. More than necessarily my catches, I kind of want to share how I'm catching them because that's that's all the fun about it. It's just figuring out, um, you know, what the bite is like this time of year because it can be different. Yeah. Um, I kind of want to talk about my slam. Is kind of what I want to talk about. If that's all right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've been, I've been doing my slam two years to the date. Okay, and so it's time to let it evolve to something else. Still going to be the slam, but what I what I decided I want to do is is do more teaching. So I'm taking each lure and I'm doing a basically an instructional video, a little short one, on each lure that's in the box, and then going out and trying to figure out how the fish are what the fish are biting on, and then try to catch as many fish as I can out of something that's in the box that the that the bass want, instead of trying to force feed them what they don't want. And so basically, I'm figuring out a pattern and a and a presentation with what's in the box, and hopefully. By the end of the video, the guys that w are watching it really do learn a lot about what's in the box and what they can do with it, and that's my thought behind it. So I'm excited. I didn't. I finished the the first one uh, today. Unfortunately, it took me two days. Um, and uh, but you know, it's hopefully it turned out pretty good because I've still got the raw footage. I haven't even sent it to my editor yet. But that's what's new here. Uh, the bass moved up to spawn, and so we're just looking for bedding bass and trying to pitch in and catch them. That's neat because it's it's. I kind of get that vibe too, because it's almost like you get to you get to not necessarily mold the, the day around one bait, but kind of focus on that one lure, kind of showcase that one lure, especially if that's what they're biting on. Um, and it's a different, like I kind of like it. it's a different way of approaching uh, what you got in your box instead of like you said, force feed them to, to eat it, because the baits the baits in the box are gonna work, but may not work all in that one day. Right. I mean, there's there's been days where you can only get them to eat a crankbait or only get them to eat a uh, black and blue jig. So um, taking the time. Sometimes, like when you do the slam, person, I do it when I catch one on, the, on that bait. It's at the back of the boat, and I'm on to the next one. But I haven't really taken time to talk about that bait that just caught me. You know, that three or four pounder. So I like that. That's, that's a pretty I, cool. I move. got I got tired of the man. I wish I could fish that all day long because that's exactly what they want kind of feeling every time I. Because yeah, I mean, you just caught a nice fish on it. It's like the hardest thing to do is put it down. Yep. And then it's going to take me the rest of the day to catch a fish on everything else when I could be whacking them on that bait. Right. That's that's a cool mindset. Um, did you see something? Um, yeah, people, I guess it's different for you guys because it's way warmer there, way longer, but people are wondering when they should start throwing frogs out here in the Midwest. Frogs in the Midwest? I guess, I, I guess I'm going to have to answer that question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't be question. 60 degrees when the water temperature gets 60 and up. Actually, no, I'd say 70. The coldest I've ever caught them on a frog was 65, but that was in that special lake in North Carolina that no, it's no. That's, <laughs> that was a special. That's yeah. just a special. Like, we're not even gonna worry about Gene. Gene they eat. They they eat fish food on the top, so they're a top water okay. feeding. Fish. Okay, so if you have lake with with a, a fish machine, a fish feeding machine out there, then you can catch them when the water temperature was you say sixty degrees. Okay, yeah. Duly yeah. duly noted. Uh, Freezing up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. We should we should put out a like because we live right by Lake Mission. We should put out a little fish feeder out there. Get the salmon and smallmouth that come oh, yeah. I think that's a good idea. But uh, for me, it's it varies. It depends on the frog. Um, 
man, I feel like i, I, I got to be careful with this because in your situation it happens at different lakes. I like to throw the frog just to play it safe. Like I can get on a consistent frog bite when that water temperature reaches 60 degrees. There have been a few times where if if the vegetation starts to grow early, not necessarily like it's, it's almost like the water temperature dictates it a lot, but when you have a little bit of vegetation that starts to kind of make its way up to the surface, you can sometimes get on a pretty early top water bite. There's been a few times where uh, we've got early pads here when the water temperature has been, I mean, you're like 60 degrees, which is pretty cold for, you know, top water fish, especially since they haven't fully gotten in that spawn mode, and they've eaten it. Uh, they've gotten on it. And there's been times, too, where we'll go up north in Wisconsin where those fish are used to those, that cold weather, and all it takes is, like, you know, some, like a 2-degree, 3-degree warming uh, period to push them up shallow, and they'll hit poppers, you know. Not the same applications of frog, but they're eating top water when the water temps 60 degrees. And uh, I've had fish come off their beds to eat frogs and poppers. It happens. It's not a thing I would probably base a pattern off of, but it's it's not abnormal. So I guess two things dictated, like what Gene said, water temperature is a big thing, and then vegetation plays a huge role. If I get an area that looks nice, it's in a decent amount of depth and it's got pads, I'm gonna break out a pop. Uh, excuse me, a frog. The one I personally like is the. Um, is the depths it's a slither k it's a very very finesse oriented frog it just kind of zigzags through the vegetation but it's awesome so that's my long answer for that question what else what else we got um, yeah. people want some tips on the fish head spin the oh we got spin. it we got it yeah we have one i'm gonna hold it up and then i'm gonna let one of you guys let me find it real quick i got see we got the big box of lures here a bunch of baits um, <laughs> This is just these are just products that we featured this month or uh, March. Sorry, um, I opened it up. I was playing with it, but then I forgot what I did. Oh, it's in here, baby. Yeah, it's in here. So this is fish head spin right here for some of you guys who maybe didn't get it or want to know about it. Um, if this weight is well, shoot, I'm not gonna look for the weight, but it's a heavier version. Um, how would you fish this? Let's hear it, guys. I just put a paddle tail on it or some type of swim bait, maybe a, a gambler little easy. Oh, I like that. I like that bait. That would, that would go nice on this. Or, I mean, if we're even feeling froggy, you could put a big easy on it and see what happens. But I'd probably keep it a little smaller. A little smaller. Yeah, I, I think this is one of those baits that you don't want to do overkill with it because it's just so, I don't know. It's one of those, I, I mean, I, I don't fish these baits too much. I, I fish them. A little bit last year when the water's cold, so I'm not the, the one to really give tips on this. Gene, have you have you ever really gotten into it before? Let me tell you the traditional way of fishing it. The uh, the traditional way is with a fluke on the back, a, a, either a, a, a super fluke junior or a fluke, but we usually put a, a junior on it, and it catches suspended fish. So a lot of times, especially in, in lakes that have a lot of spotted bass, the spotted bass will suspend over top of the brush piles. And you cast it out, you count it down to depth, and that's why that heavy one's really good. It'll probably go 18 feet deep on it with a with six pound fluorocarbon, and you drop it, you count it down to depth, and then you slowly just reel it back to the boat. Uh, not much action to it at all. You just got the spinner and the tail just flut, flitter, fluttering, and uh, you can pop hop it a little bit. Another thing we do in the in the winter time is we get it into ditches uh, or depressions long depressions that the bass are in and we just yo-yo it up and down. And that's kind of what um, Casey Ashley was doing with his uh, his little horsey head spin, which is basically a fish head spin to win the classic, is getting it into those ditches and yo-yoing it real slow out of those ditches. It's it's one of those baits that, correct me if I'm wrong, seems kind of like that early season, maybe late season cold water bait. Yeah, it's a, a cold water bait, exactly. A super effective bait and I don't know if it was as popular as it is now, maybe since the classic, but I think it's always been a it's been a bait that, that a lot of anglers have had luck with. And now that you just mentioned that, now I'm thinking about it. I have fished this sort a lot as a kid. I used to fish the small little underspins for bluegill and, and crappie, and bass would eat it all the time. Uh, Throw in a different method, but I tried to usually position off the bank and and cast it out there. But it's a cool little deal. What kind of equipment? I noticed you you said six pound test. What kind of other equipment do you use for? Like I, this seems like a very very equipment specific uh, way of fishing. Like, what what are you usually using with this? Put it on your put it on your medium light action drop shot rod, uh, spinning rod, six pound fluorocarbon. Uh, you might you could get away with braid, but I'd use either 100% all the way, you know, fluorocarbon on the whole spool with a deep spool because it you cast those things they go a mile. 
<laughs> um, and uh, and you're you're fishing open water. You're fishing uh, along bluff walls. Um, what else? And on drops on ledges. I bet you'd be really good on Kentucky Lake on ledges. Yeah, I was about to say that seems like this seems like a pretty decent ledge bait. Something where you have that sudden drop that kind of deep suspending fishy area. I liked it. I did not get this in the box. I don't know which 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 box you're in in this. I should know. But I don't know which one you're in, but I'm. Okay. I came in the regular box. Did it? Okay, yeah. I gotta fish this. This is this is nice. Have you uh, seen see the bottom of the head? See how it's rounded on the bottom, flat and round. Right there, yeah. It's where it, the way it lands is it lands, yep, just like that. So when you hit hit it on a hard bottom, it'll land stand up with the with the fluke st sitting straight up, and a bass that follows it down is just they just hammer it when it hits the bottom. Look at that. Yep. So don't be afraid to hop it if you guys are fishing it. See, that's cool. I'm glad you said that because I was I was thinking a lot of a lot of times people are just fishing this suspended, but yeah, that's that's spot on, man. That's like. Yeah, I like yeah, people that. like that. We wrote an article about it on the blog, and a lot of people liked it. Yeah, that was one that we we covered a lot because it's it's a daunting bait at first, but once you kind of get in the swing of things and, and figure it out a little bit, it's effective and it catches fish. The heaviest line I'd put, I'd fish it on is ten pound test. I wouldn't fish it any heavier than that. Okay, yeah, that's something I was personally curious about too. So I got a little knowledge <laughs> off of that question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, we're getting a few. Probably do one or two more here. Yeah. And then, um, then what was, oh yeah. Yeah, we'll uh, give something away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what's your guys' favorite worm to drop shot? I, I, I can't <laughs> talk about drop shot fishing because I do it too much, so I'm going to let you guys talk about that. I, <laughs> I have a list of my favorite worms to drop shot. <laughs> all I do is, I don't, even, I don't even own any casting reels, that's all. I own set, I own... Uh, Twelve spinny rods, all split up with six and eight contests. So I'll let you guys take that one. You can go first, G. Okay. <laughs> well, let's see. John's list of drop shot worms. <laughs> if you open up his tackle box, all he has is drop shot worms, hooks, and weights. Because that's what he throws 90% of the time. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 that's, I can't tell if that's my strength or my weakness, to be honest. It works. Yeah. Being broke, don't fix it. Oh uh, yeah, my favorite one is is the new is the plasma tail, uh, the the short one. I mean, the the action that you get on the plasma tail when you just barely shake the line, even on the slack line, I absolutely love it. And it, it I put a ton of fish in the boat last year on it, and it was the first first year fishing it, so it's gonna have to be the plasma tail. And then the second is gonna be the robo worm. Oh uh, yeah. So, the old faithful. You can't beat those sometimes. Here's, so. bigger, here's the bigger plasma tail, which uh, this is this her answer. I'm going to circle back to this bigger worm, but I want to hear Cindy's, Cindy's drop shot lure of preference. I, I've never used a drop shot. What? <laughs> it lives in Florida. <laughs> okay, Sydney, this is what I want you to do. <laughs> Get a medium action. Oh, okay, somebody turn their phone off. You know? <laughs> we blame that on you. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Get get a medium action bait caster. Put 12 pound test line on it, and put a drop shot with a three two aught or three aught um, worm hook, and go flip it into your grass. Short leader, a little short five, six inch leader with about a half ounce weight. Flip it into your grasp with a little worm on it and just see what happens. The only time I've ever used a drop shot was during the uh, December slam with the, uh, it had the uh, drop shot hooks and then it came with the tassel tail or taper tail. Mm -hmm. That was the only time, caught like a little three pounder and then I don't even know what happened to those hooks and those worms. Oh, that, was, that was too much, that was, that was too much drop shotting for... For you, yeah, that was. Uh, that was enough for one day. <laughs> I can't believe you just said that. You've never really. Just, nope. just fish, let's fish it on a bait caster, just like you would pitch and flip anything else. Just go flip your grass with it. You'll find that it punches through that grass a lot easier. You yeah, know? I had it on a 17-pound mono and like a medium, medium heavy fast action rod. 
This is everything. This I know I wasn't even doing it right. <laughs> this is like everything that I, my mind's scrambling. I don't know what to say. It's <laughs> drop shot blasphemy. That's what it is. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I knew I knew your reaction was gonna be crazy, so I was a little embarrassed saying I've, I've no, only done it once. It's a it's a it's a tactic that really if you if you fish a lot of those kind of waters you don't need to use. Uh, trust me, if I had if I didn't have deep clear water reservoirs and places like that around here, I probably would never pick it up. But it's a, it's a popular thing. Um, but Gene was saying he's he likes the smaller size, which I like to do a lot of. But uh, oftentimes when it heats up, I found that this summer I was doing a lot of. Or sorry, the past summer I was doing a lot of fishing in deep water with this. I mean, like 40 feet of water, and there were some areas, believe it or not, where the water was so clear that there was light penetrating down to that bottom, and there was just the slightest bit of grass growing down there. Um, and when I'm fishing that deep water, you can you can throw shallow or sorry, excuse me, smaller worms like this. But I was actually throwing the bigger plasma tail, which I believe is six and three quarters. Or six, Gene, do you know what size this is? Six and a half or something. Yeah, like that? yeah. Big, it's a big worm. It's something you think, oh, shaky head all day. But I drop shot it, and I mean, I nose hook it with tiny hooks. I mean, really small hooks, uh, little gummies and hooks that you wouldn't normally think to use on a big worm like this. But it works. The fish, the cool thing about these baits is they just fold up. I mean, they fold up when the fish gets right up behind it. And it works really good. Um, yeah, drop shot's a staple for, for me personally and for a lot of guys up here. It's, it's a bait that works really good when, when the water temperature starts to get around 50 degrees. It works good in cold water, but personally, it's a warm water bait for me. It's when, it's when the fish have moved out deep, when they're done spawning, when, they're, when, the, when the, the sun is high in the air. That's when I use it. People have mistaken it as being a super like cold water finesse when the fish are lethargic. I use it when the fish, when the water's really warm. Uh, it, it comes into play so much. But, uh, yeah, drop shots. I fish it too much. E. Kelly's in love with it. Yeah. Well, that's, how, that's how I am with flipping and pitching. That's what I do, like, 98% of the time. That's all I do. Right, yeah. I, so I know what you mean. Everyone's got their own forte. Everyone's got their own. Uh, yep. G, uh, yours is flipping. Mine's drop shot. Gene is wearing Crocs. That's his kind of deal. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was going to ask is, uh, is how – does that – there's a secret because I know you don't wear them for fashion. It's got to be something that when you wear those crocs that they put you on some sort of bite, they somehow like a like a switch turns on and those fish start eating. <laughs> I'm gonna start wearing them this season and see if then I my my catch ratio goes up. Yep. But if so, then I know I'm good. <laughs> That's what I wear when I go fishing and I catch fish. It's it's the shoes. That's all it is. Now I need to try them out. I've got two testimonies right now. I need to try them out. Um, but yeah, that's that's cool. We got a lot of stuff covered today, guys. Drop shot fishing. I think we've covered the whole spectrum of bass fishing within this episode. I feel like, especially spring. Um, but one cool thing that we want to do for everyone who watched and stuck to the watch, uh, we're gonna do a giveaway. We want to give back some. We're gonna do more. We didn't do it the last one. It's something which we missed out on. But being that we've got a bunch of viewers and great subscribers um, and supporters of of Cindy's channel and Gene's channel and my channel, we want to do a giveaway. What are we giving away today, Fred? A new car, a new boat. Uh, we're giving away. We ran out of boats. We did all the boats at the last live stream. Oh no! Um, next live stream, we'll probably give away dozen boats at dozen. least. But for this one, we're gonna give away a box. Box, which is equally as good in my opinion. Yeah. Are we gonna away nice, regular nice boats? Um, or we could do. Boats. I'm gonna have to disagree with that. <laughs> what? Uh, uh, you would rather have a boat? I would much rather have another boat. <laughs> no lures to fish with on the boat then. Then what do you, I'm, I'm, then you gotta have something to gap that bridge. Hey, without a boat, you're just bank trash. I mean, just you know, you need a boat. <laughs> That's basically what I am, Gene. I don't have a boat. <laughs> See, this, this, is, this is when this is when we have to stop the show because then Gene he starts making fun of me and I get my hand up. Anyway, um, <laughs> let's uh, yeah. So what's what's the stipulations? How is so we need uh, first person to leave in the comments. Trying to see who's been uh, watching John's videos on the new uh, YouTube channel. So, what was the knot that John taught people how to tie on the last video that we put up earlier this week? I don't even know. First, I know. Can I answer? Oh, first, first, <laughs> first comment uh, wins a box. Oh, it's a little bit of a lag though, so. Yeah, well, we'll still see who's first. Right. The comment section is just going off the rails right now, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah. Just crazy it's comments. Just, uh, off. See, I'm not looking. Oh, we got the first one. Who was it? What's his name? Andrew Harrison Outdoors. Yeah. Andrew Harrison Outdoors. Andrew, what's up, brother? He, he right on it too. Oh yeah, Alberta not. Alberta not. Yeah. I don't even know. See, I don't even know. Oh, I thought it was Albert. 
Yeah. <laughs> the Albert nut? <laughs> That's what I'm thinking of. He doesn't tie leaders, so we'll forgive her on that one. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> you go straight, blur, straight break. Just blur. Yeah. Hey, it works every time. It, it works. The Alberto not work. The reason we even did that video was because I got a new reel and I wanted John to tie it on for me. So <laughs> yeah, we uh, set we rigged up the camera and uh, John taught everybody in Alberto knot while setting up my pole for me. Yeah, so he that actually nice. that actually got used. It wasn't yeah. like it was like oh time yeah. on school. Caught, and a, caught a bunch of fish on it last weekend. Actually. That was cool. Uh, anyway, yeah, we really appreciate everybody who watched. If you guys are interested in learning more about Mystery Tackle Box and some of the products we mentioned here, uh, once this video is reposted, most likely tomorrow or sometime throughout the week. Um, we're going to leave all the info in the description below. Also, go and check out these two awesome bass fishing channels. Cindy and Gene are both anglers out there who are continuously putting out good content. Um, you know, the cool thing about YouTube is we've got all these other anglers from all over the U.S., so you get to see a different perspective, you know, up north, down south, east, west coast. So it's really cool. They're both awesome anglers. They both do slams, uh, so keep on the lookout for that. I know, you know, they're both going to be posting them soon. But I really appreciate you having you guys on. I appreciate everyone who watched the show. And uh, stay tuned for some future ones. We'd like to have this thing be kind of not necessarily like an everyday thing. That'd be ideal. But, you know, weekly or biweekly so we can we can get your guys' questions answered and uh, teach you some stuff. But Andrew Harrison, we'll, uh, we'll reach out to you. Don't worry. He's asking how he oh, We're not just going to blow you off. Don't worry. Oh, sorry. One more thing. We, we got a, a note. There's actually another individual in the office right now. Um, oh, we got a question that uh, Andrew lives in North Point, Florida. Andrew, if you're still watching, do you live in North Point, Florida? I feel like, I feel like the answer is going to be yes, maybe. <laughs> but uh, anyway, oh, and then the other thing too is every month we do a scratch off uh, match the hatch deal where you guys can win some prizes. And one thing that I kind of want to mention, which is pretty awesome, is that a lot of people have been winning some stuff. Over a hundred who rags have been uh, won off the scratch off. We've had over. Uh, it was over 10 Strike Pro Series sunglasses, 11 number 8 tackle blackout casting rods. Gene, that's like that's more than you have, right? You have a bunch of those sticks, don't you? <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like that's a ton. We have um, 11 Cocoon polarized uh, glasses that were won, four Arden Bolt spinning reels, two deeper fish finders, and two uh, Daiwa Tatulos along with one Flambu AZ4 tackle system. So that's kind of cool. You guys, you gotta scratch those off and send them in. If you win, then that's awesome. We want to see, we want to see what you guys uh, want, and also want to see what you guys are catching these fish on in the box. Uh, Brett does a lot of the Instagram stuff. If you guys have some fish that you caught with the box, or just want to see your catch in general, send them over to the uh, Mr. Tag Box Instagram. Shoot us a DM. Slide into those DMs. Slide up in those DMs and, uh, and repost them. <laughs> and, 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 and send some uh, some pictures, and we're always ecstatic to see what you guys are catching with the items that we get in our box. But uh, I they, never win. Why don't I ever win? Did you not win? That's the other problem too. Like, they never let any of us win because because we're I don't know why don't why don't we win? It's been an issue since I started getting these boxes. I never win. I've tried contacting customer service multiple times, asking. <laughs> at certain at certain point in time, you try so hard, you feel like they should just give you something. But uh, scratch those tickets off. If you guys get some get some winners, then contact us. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. It was an awesome show. Really appreciate. Uh, Cindy and Gene being on here. Appreciate, like I said, all of you guys staying tuned. So uh, we will catch you guys on the next MTV Live. Good fishing. See ya. Bye.